Yo, what's up, what's up? We live at RGB Gaming Stand at Rage Expo 2023. Sitting next to me is a very handsome gentleman, Rehat Kandafer, the editor of NAG Magazine. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm very good, and you? Um, I'm awesome, I'm awesome. Oh, I man, you started the oldest gaming magazine in South Africa. I mean, how does it feel to have a title like that on your crown? Sure, look, I can't claim that I started it, but I was definitely a part of it from the early days, and I feel very privileged to have been part of that um, for so long. I mean, nag is something that's in your blood rather than a job, right? You don't do this because you make lots of money, you do it because you really love what you do. So it's been an incredible journey, um, and I'm so fortunate to be at the helm of relaunching the magazine edition. Yeah, I remember I first had my copy of uh, Nag magazine. I think I was a pimple-faced teenager, at CBC Pretoria around 2001, 2002, 2003, somewhere like somewhere way back then. And then you guys kept on running for, for quite a long time. So when did you start printing? So the last magazine printed in 2015, 2015, 2016. I always forget. Anyway, yeah, I mean, it, the industry was changing, right? It, it all went to web, uh, advertisers changed their spend. And putting magazines together is expensive. It's not, you know, it's not putting together a website. There's actual hard costs in it. Designers cost money, paper costs money, distribution costs money. So, I mean, a business decision was made back then uh, to stop the print. Um, and also Rage, you know, Rage was very much a part of, of the NAG business back then. But since then, we've, we've parted ways amicably. I mean, NAG is now back to its original roots of just being a publication and a, a media company. Um, and Rage, Rage is an event company. And this has also allowed us to just, you know, focus on what we want to do and be, uh, what our core focus is. And that's allowed us to bring back the magazine. Because that's, that's all we put our effort into. Oh, man, you should have bought a copy of, of the magazine. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, but then I, I'm a bit confused. I thought NAG started Rage, or was it two different groups? No, no, no. Rage and NAG was the same company for a long time. It's the same, the same people that started it. Um, but a couple of years ago, NAG parted ways. Uh, Len Neary is the publisher now. He's also involved with NAG from the very beginning. Um, we just stepped away and like I said, we focused, we, we try to refocus what NAG was, right? Bring back the web up to a level where we want to enjoy the content on there. Obviously the magazine versus website, you can't compare. They're two different things. You know, the magazine is very nostalgic. People's got something to hold and feel and then smell those beautiful pages. Um, so that's the reason why we're relaunching the magazine. You forgot to mention that your magazine also comes with discs. Back in the days, it used to come with demo discs. You know, I, I can't recall that. What kind of games were, 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 were popular back then? Quake? Quake, and Unreal Tournament. I mean, we, all the retro games. Every game that we love today is basically from that era. Let's be honest. I mean, we've got some good AAA titles now, but everybody, everybody that's a gamer in this generation have a, has a deep love for the games that was born in the 2000s. And that's why we feel so nostalgic about not just the brand, but gaming as general. I mean, if you look around, a lot of people are very much into the nostalgic side of gaming. I mean, Mario Brothers. I mean, everybody loves Mario Brothers. My first game that I grew up with. So, what do you think actually killed the, the print industry? Obviously, it's online. But what specifically do you think influencer marketing was just way better than it's like the best form of marketing no, these not, days? It's not that. It's, it's advertising, right? I mean, Nag Magazine back in the day needed advertising, you know, you need X amount of advertising pages to be able to print a magazine, pay salaries and do what you do on a monthly basis. As soon as advertisers start spending their money elsewhere, obviously, you know, they, if they go online to digital, it doesn't matter where they print it, they, they're taking money away from the print side. So that slowly led to decline, doesn't happen. Okay, so this new relaunched NAG magazine is coming out once a year. Right, or and well, originally, okay, before you answer that, originally did it come out, was it a monthly magazine, bi-monthly, or how did it work? Yeah, so it was a monthly magazine, forever, since the inception, um, and when it stopped, I mean, the first idea was to bring back annual because, you know, we can easily cap an annual and we don't have to set expectations. I don't think it's feasible to do a monthly magazine right now. Think about news cycles, think about review cycles, right? What we tried to do with the, the annual edition was to, 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 to do it's a coffee table book that, like your old NAG magazines, you wanted to hold on forever. Mm -hmm. And we try to enhance that value by putting a unique code on it, putting steam codes on the side, lots of Easter eggs. Yeah, so, while we would love to do a monthly magazine, I don't think it's necessarily feasible right now. We may be looking at quarterly next year, so every four months, potentially, definitely an annual. 
But I think we're going to do a big uh, debrief in January, kind of see what the land of the land was. The feedback has been amazing so far. And if I just go on what people have told us, we'll definitely do a quarterly. Yeah, so um, the free disc this year, um, the, the new free disc, um, what kind of stuff does it contain? So one of the cool things on the cover disc is there's three South African game demos on there. Um, there's one by a company called SMD Technologies. It's it's you can hold it down. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, it's it's kind of a tournament style game that they're launching for for their own kind of esport purposes. And we thought it was a very good game developed in Unreal Five. Um, so we wanted to do some work with them. We're gonna do we can de develop a level in this game as well. We haven't spoken much about this. Um, so that's one of the demos that's on there. We don't have our level on there yet. That's gonna come next year. Um, then Metavoidal, obviously the cover game that we've put on, Yellow Lab Games, a fantastic game, fantastic bunch of people and they were a natural choice for the cover because it's such a strong South African developed game. And then World of Turtles is the third game, um, also a very popular South African developer, solo developer um, about building communities and like, you know, little towns on the back of, <laughs> on the back of a turtle. Just remember, this, is, this isn't to give you the latest up to date information, this is a very nostalgic experience. So, Everything on there is kind of a throwback to the old disc that you would remember. So yes, we've got NVIDIA drivers on there, AMD Intel drivers, but that's kind of just for the joke of it. Um, we've got some secret folders in there, uh, lots of hidden codes. If you know what you're looking for, you'll find the hidden codes. They're not all within plain sight, so you're going to need to maybe look at some file structures. Um, we've got some posters on there. Uh, we've got some, you know, a little bit of everything. Just something for you to, to enjoy scratching around and finding stuff. And a lot of Easter eggs. Yeah, there's a lot of bonuses. So that's just the disc only. And there's two discs. There's two discs. What? Okay. How big are these discs? Oh, they're the normal. They're the normal 4.5. So it's a nine gig in total, nine gigabytes worth of data. And it's full of local developed South African games. Yeah, so three locally developed games, apps, utilities, some benchmarks. But how is the local games development industry? You you barely hear. I think the last local game I heard of was the one on Nintendo Switch. Um, Oh God, the semblance. There was look, a, yeah. yeah, look, the, the local game development industry is very strong. Uh, if I look at the quality of the local game developers, um, we have some of the best in the world, without a doubt. In fact, there's a lot of local game developers that do work for international development companies. They don't necessarily develop their own games. So it's a team of developers that help international businesses or international developers. Um, the, the industry is good. It's recognition that the guys need, right? So obviously with anything you have good games and bad games, but we need, to, we need to give these guys recognition, push those good games to the front. And that's kind of what our job is. It's always been to talk about the up and comers. But it's difficult to find them if they don't approach you, right? A place like Rage, I often find new developers that I thought, but how did I not see this before? And it just shows you how much in a silo people can be. I mean, so we always try and hunt for these guys. I mean, anybody watching now, if you've got a game out, if you're a developer, please get in contact with us. I mean, we love to talk about it, love talking to developers and, and sharing that love and getting them the exposure that potentially could help them sell their game, but also put them in the right contact with the right communities and to become a successful developer. Wow, that's amazing. So I'm, I'm all about graphics. I know some people say gaming is not about graphics anymore. So what, what kind of games are these? Are these like uh, basic platform games or side-scrolling games or are they like Unreal Engine 5 type of graphics? Also, you have to keep in mind what tools the developers have to do, right? I mean, a lot of South African indie developers are small teams or solo teams, so their capability is only so much based on small budget that they have. Unreal Engine, Unreal 5 specifically, has allowed developers access to a lot better technologies, a lot better tools, you know, at their disposal and to make a good game. Obviously, there's a lot of work to do, but the visual aspect could kind of stand up against the best out there. Most of the games, though, are not high-end graphics. Remember, these game developers are trying to not create a, necessarily the highest resolution visually stunning game. They want a functional game that is fun to play with the graphic style that kind of tries to represent the, the, the game style or the artist style, you know, who's doing it. What else is in the magazine? So the content creator feature is very strong for us. We want to always support them. So we have a beautiful profile on our favorites, part one. We couldn't fit all of them in. So we can have a part two in the next magazine for, for more content creators that, that NAG readers can follow. We also have a very good feature on retro gaming. So if you're going to pay to those retro gaming features, um, Devin put it together. He's Retro Collect ZA. He's got an Instagram account, huge in his own right. Um, and it's just a throwback to all the old nostalgic um, gaming hardware, consoles, um, peripherals, anything you can think of. So speaking about retro stuff, my first console 
was the knock of Nintendo NES, Golden China. Oh, we could call it Golden China. You we, we used to remember that with the 101 cartridge, and, you, and then you put it there. So what was your first ever gaming console? I vividly remember going to my parents' uh, friend's house one day, and their kid had a console. It was a Famicom. I actually think they probably had the original Nintendo, um, but Mario Brothers. As soon as I saw that game, it changed my life. Uh, and it's never been the same again. I mean, it really fundamentally changed how I saw technology and also how I can engage with it. Um, I obviously nagged my parents until they got me a Famicom. And the Regis also had one of those. you remember yeah, those remember kind of Regis. consoles? Oh, Regis. Uh, okay. So where can people buy your magazine? So obviously at Rage, we're doing it now. But the thing is, Rage is coming to an end. Shop.nag.co.za is where we can buy the nag. We are still sending them out until Christmas. So if you want to get somebody a Christmas gift, this is a perfect Christmas gift for that. And they will make sure you get your, your magazine before Christmas. So if you're a gamer, writer, or photographer, content creator, and you want to feature on Nag magazine, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, very easy. We, we love people getting in contact with us, you know, pitching their own ideas, pitching articles, sharing us what they've done. Um, and then that gives us the opportunity to, see, to find gaps and where we can fit anybody in, right? Especially if you say to us, I'm very good at something specific and I can show you what I can produce and I'll produce this article or story. So that's kind of the best way to get your article or story or idea published. This is before we wrap it up. All, all the good things that come into the, the new magazine. Okay, you're giving away steam keys. That's in every magazine. Uh, you're giving away posters. Uh, what, what am I missing? Competitions is there. Well, the biggest one is the loot ticket. So in one of the magazines, out of the 10,000, is a golden, well, it's not a golden ticket, it's a silver platinum ticket, but it's a loot, the nag loot ticket. And the person that finds that ticket in the, comp, uh, in the magazine will win a 30 grand Intel computer gaming machine. So that's been one of the biggest talks around, you know, people always wanting to know which number it is. I don't know. I purposely didn't want to know. Special instructions on there. And how to claim, and as soon as we get that notification, yeah, it's going to be exciting. And then next year also, we're going to do a lot more competitions because each magazine is individually numbered. Uh, throughout the year, next year, you know, we're going to do stuff like if you've got number X, Y, Z, you know, let us know. If you contact us in two days, we've got a prize. Your ticket competition reminds me of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory when you, when you get the, the ticket and the chocolates. Yeah, oh, wow. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think we, we covered everything. Uh, th thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rahal, for, for, for having me. Oh, yeah, you know, appreciate it. Appreciate it. So, yeah, guys, it's to wrap. We at RGB stage, uh, day three of Rage Expo. I think everybody's packing up and going home. Yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been real. How, how has Rage 2023 been for you so far? It's been exhausting, phenomenal. I mean, uh, we were also streaming. Um, it's fantastic to speak to everybody. We had such great feedback from old readers, new readers, you know, people sharing their stories about NAG. So it's very fulfilling, very rewarding to be here um, because it shows us how much people love NAG. And I feel super privileged to be a part of it. I mean, I can't take credit for all of it. I mean, there's a leg, there's a history of people behind me who built magazine, uh, the, the magazine to where it is today. And I'm just privileged that I can take that torch forward, you know, with, uh, with a beautiful team behind me. And uh, we've got some big things lined up next year. So check out nag.co.za for more. You guys heard it. You can order it at www.nag.co.za. There's 10,000 copies. You could be the lucky person to win that special ticket and win a 30k super fancy gaming lab PC. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So it's a wrap. Thank you. Oh, that was great.